Well, hello again and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fisting Java Save the Universe. I am Fist25, and today we are going to do a guide to the last ship that I have available in the RSI line until the Scorpius comes out. And this is the RSI Mantis, which is the single seat uh, quantum enforcement and quantum interdiction ship. Uh, other than the Drake Cutlass Blue, it's the only other ship in the game, I believe, that can do any type of uh, quantum manipulation with the quantum drives. So, welcome to Patch 317. We're here in the PTU. We're going to take a look at this ship. Let's get started. All right, the RSI Mantis, a single seat interdiction ship capable of pulling targets out of quantum travel using quantum enforcement. It is lightly armed and, and armored. It is a tin can. Uh, the Mantis is designed to work in tandem with more heavily armed law enforcement or pirates to confront the captured ships. The Mantis, it's one of nature's most adept predators. Its patience is immeasurable. Its focus indomitable. It waits silently for its prey. The android hunter positions itself for attack, identifying its unsuspecting target when it's most vulnerable. And then steeled to the task at hand, the mantis strikes. Its prey never stood a chance. Catch. Hold. Enforce. That line is from the uh, the RSI Mantis commercial, which we are going to take a look at uh, a little bit later on in the video. Thankfully, though, the Mantis does not have a brochure that's outdated. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at the exterior view of the Mantis. You can see that right up front, it's got a ton of glass, really, really good viewpoint um, for that pilot seat that sits up there. Uh, you notice it has four landing gear uh, legs. Um, it is pretty lightly armored. It's got two uh, size three mounts on there, which I have a couple of Panther 337s up there. Um, it's got kind of a unique look to it. I don't want to say it necessarily looks like a praying mantis, but it, it's very angular, almost stealthy like. Uh, this is its base color, lots of blues and blacks and a ton of white, obviously. It does have its engine nacelles up here, and uh, we're going to take a look at that when we do uh, the flight of the mantis, if that's, a, if that's a thing. It is a little windy here on Eda, so that's why I'm moving so darn slow. Um, the ship actually has an elevator to get into it. It's one of the smaller ships, but surprisingly, there's a lot of stuff on the inside, even though it's a smaller ship. So here's the view from the rear. And uh, here is the port side of the ship. We'll get a much better look at this ship once we are in flight. And in the center of the ship, which we'll show you when we, we activate the uh, the quantum interdiction device, the QED. Or I'm sorry, that'd be the quantum enforcement device, the QED. Um, we'll, we'll go into that more in detail. We're also going to do, uh, of course, a dogfighting <laughs> simulation. Uh, we're we're going to see how tough this ship is. Um, we're going to talk a lot about quantum enforcement, the quantum snare, um, things to consider about that. Um, we're going to go into, I'm going to try to do my best to give you a tutorial on how to actually capture ships. And so we're going to review a couple different websites that have some real good information. Uh, one of them being Reddit. Uh, we'll go over kind of a Q&A of the RSI Mantis. Uh, we'll do a third person um, dogfight with it. And we'll do an interdiction test with the Mantis just to kind of see you know how it works and stuff and we'll be in the mantis and we'll try to interdict jaw or something coming down a, a space lane with his caterpillar um so 
I guess let's go inside the ship. Um, this ship, I don't believe it has any cargo capacity. Uh, yeah, zero SCU. It does have a little bit of stowage space uh, on the inside. You could definitely do box missions in this ship. Um, let you know it does. It is on sale right now. It's always available. It goes for about $150 uh, US. And uh, it's actually a pretty quick, fairly maneuverable ship uh, for its size, being a small ship. So right here, let's see, where am I? There we go. Right here is the elevator button. We're going to go ahead and call that. You'll see the elevator comes down. We're going to look back up and hit the elevator button right there, facing forward. And there we go. So it is rather loud inside this cockpit. I mean, I know you can't hear it as well as I can right now, but there's a lot of computer hum going on. So we'll take the interior tour here before we uh, actually hop into the cockpit. Um, you can see there's a lot of space up here in the pilot area, but there's nothing really to interact with except the seat itself. Um, the seats on kind of a swivel gimbal type thing. There's a couple component bays that are non-interactable, a couple screens not interactable. There is, however, a bed. Look at this. There's a bed on the Mantis, so that means you can, after you do your piracy, you can log out in the bed. Um, I believe this piece right here is part of the whole quantum enforcement device. And uh, this is, of course, the elevator. Um, believe it or not, guys, there is a restroom, an RSI ship with a decent restroom. And you can actually sit on this toilet, unlike some other toilets. So good to know. And right across from the restroom is your food processor. This guy right here. In your coffee machine, this guy right there. Uh, what I'm assuming is you probably put some food in here, but you see there's a ton of room in here to put boxes for box missions in addition to doing your, <coughs> your quantum interdiction stuff, which is really a PvP function. Uh, you can do it to a PvE at some point, I guess. So let's go ahead and hop in this seat. <coughs> we'll do a... cockpit tour here. So I already have power on um, and I did that so the lights will stay on. But you can see right here, there is a ton of glass here uh, in the Mantis. Not a whole lot of downward looking uh, glass, but there is a little bit in there um, where you can see, but you can land pretty easily. It has these, you know, these translucent displays these MFDs and I really really like uh, the way that's done it looks very good it's also a host SAS setup just like the Aurora so you know I'm a big fan of that but this is the default layout here and the default view so you could see all four screens pretty well um, the top two being a target and your ship status communications on the bottom right and of course the ever important weapons on the bottom left and this oh that button right there is what's going to turn on our our quantum interdiction device you can see up here it is the rainy uh qed that is that's what we're going to use to both interdict and uh dampen uh people in quantum um the interdiction device has a range of about 20,000 kilometers, I believe. And the uh, the dampening where people can't quantum away is about 2,000. Maybe it's in meters. Maybe I got kilometers wrong. But it's it, it'll stop ships really far out, but it'll only dampen within 2,000 meters. So two, I think two kilometers. So without further ado, let's start at the engines go let's take a, a look on the well let's actually pull up a little bit and we'll take a look at the ship so taking off hey it doesn't rock it doesn't nose up it, it's a pretty even takeoff we can see there's our four different landing gear here let's go ahead and pull those up very nice landing gear door wheel well doors there or 
strut doors, whatever you want to call them. Um, it looks, what do you guys think about the ship and the look of it? It's very angular. Uh, I kind of like it. I kind of like it a lot. Uh, I wish it had a little bit more purpose than just what it has, but, uh, yeah, it actually looks pretty darn good. Let's take it for a zoom out a little bit. Let's take it for a little test flight. There we go. We'll just go at SEM speed. There's a little afterburner right there to get us up there. And uh, let's give it a little speed boost up here at the moon of Eta, a moon of Hurston up here. Do a little roll. Not too bad. The roll is actually pretty darn quick. Let's do a, a hard turn here. A little bit of burner in there. Not too bad. You can hear, I can hear the buffering of it and I, and I like it until we're moving straight again. We'll, uh, let's pull up and check the pitch. Not too bad. There we go. Not too bad at all. And we'll check the yaw. The yaw works actually really well, a lot better than I expected. Um, I don't own this ship and I don't fly it very often. Uh, I don't even own it like in game money. Um, just because I, I don't do a whole lot of PvP. I don't pull people out of quantum very often. I feel this is a very underused ship, uh, at least for the moment. So we're going to set it to cruise control. We're going to hop into the cockpit view here. We got our new reticle system in 317. Uh, you can see me pulling left and right. We'll shoot our. I have 337s on here, which is not the default gun, but nevertheless, it's up there. Uh, we'll go ahead and. Nice, a nice roll. I really like it. Uh, maneuvering is pretty good. We'll try to do a fast turn here. So in atmosphere, it actually maneuvers quite well. And two size three guns, you could probably do quite a few bounties in here, especially if you don't want them to quantum away. So with that, let's see uh, what our max speed. Oh, little hiccup. Yeah. Let's see what our max speed is in atmosphere. And it's cruising. I mean, granted, we're on a moon, but it is going pretty darn quick. Over 900 on a moon. I mean, with Afterburner. And you see Afterburner is a pretty decent burn on here. We got to almost 1200. It looks like we're slowing down considerably, though. Okay, let's head up into space. We bleed off all that energy and almost uh, start to black out, graying out a little bit. Um, of course, I brought us directly into the sun. I just I want to I want to open the uh, I want to turn on the, quant the quantum enforcement drive device, but I want to do it in space. So we are cruising. We might be at max speed at twelve nineteen um, here, climbing out of Eta's atmosphere. Yeah, we are definitely out of Eta's atmosphere. And I'm not sure what's up with the power. Okay, well, <laughs> it's like we lost power. Oh, there we go. There's our vector indicator. There we go. Now we're going to get some more power going. I was wondering what the deal was. Okay, so it looks like 1220 is, is our max speed there in, in space. And uh, all right, so we'll slow down to a regular speed. We're going to go ahead and turn on the quantum enforcement device, which is here under your weapons menu. We're just going to hit on. And 
let's see if the QED spools up. It looks like it's on. Any panels? Oh, look at that. That panel did just open. So that guy in there is the quantum enforcement device. You see it's like this red, weird singularity thing that's spitting around. This may be the thumbnail right there. I like that. I really do like that. Um, okay, so let's go back to our default view. And let's start to... Uh, we will hit the right mouse button and start to charge up our bubble. There we go. You see the rainy QED up here starting to charge up. And as we... There we go. You can see that bubble starting to charge. It does take a while. I think it takes roughly 30 seconds to get it up to a full charge. That looks cool, doesn't it? I mean, it does look pretty darn wicked. Oh, that thing is spinning real fast. Maybe some more thumbnails. It is fully charged. <clears throat> we are not technically. Oh, no, we are in monitored space. So I, I don't want to get a crime stat here. So we're going to turn it off. You see that the hatch there closed. Let's go ahead and we will find some kind of a uh, other place to travel to. There we go. Magnus pretty far. And we'll go roughly 30, 40, 50,000 kilometers. Try to get out of monitored space here. shut down our quantum drive and we'll shut down our engine there okay so now that we're not in monitored space the last time I flew the mantis I used this in monitored space and it gave me a crime stat so which if you're a pirate that's fine so we're gonna spool up our drive here we can see it starts to really get its spin going. There we go, spin it up. Oh, that looks so cool, doesn't it? I mean, that thing is really starting to move. You see the bubbles start to expand. Okay, let's see how much of a charge it's at. It's at a hundred. Okay, so let's let's try to zoom out as far as we can go. Now, hopefully, I don't actually interdict anybody. Because <laughs> I'm not trying to get. Well, I guess I'm not monitored space. So it doesn't matter. Um, we can do whatever we want. So there we go. Um, and to use it, I believe you hit the right mouse button. Boosh. And so that would interdict somebody. And that's what that symbol is. Oh, you can't really see it. At the very top right of the screen. It means our interdiction is on. Now, I believe it's only going to last maybe so long until the heat kind of overcomes it a little bit. So you kind of want to be inside of a trade lane. Um, like, for instance, a... Like if you were to go to Lyria and then over in Arc Corp and then stop halfway between Lyria and Arc L1 where the mining refinery is, that would be a good place to capture people. Pull them out of quantum, demand their money, piracy or, you know, PVP. This game does have a lot of PVP. So there we go. That's how we actually physically use the QED. Um, I'm going to hit the right mouse button again, and that may actually shut it down. Looks like it is shutting it down because our particles are dissipating here. 
And there may be some kind of a timer before it goes all the way down. Let's uh, reset our view here. Now you can see that there's no more like crazy red singularity in there. Um, even though those, those gimbals are still spinning. You can see at the top right, we are not interdicting anymore and we're not doing any type of uh, quantum uh, dampening field. And uh, over here, it does look like this thing is spilling down on a timer. We'll get more into those specifically a little bit later on. But there we go, guys. That's that's basically how quantum enforcement device and uh, interdiction would end up working. So if someone was actually coming from Magda over to ETA, it would have pulled them out of quantum and then we go attack. So with that, we'll move on to uh, I'm not going to show you a box mission. I've, hopefully you've, you've seen that before. Um, the next part of the video, uh, we'll do a, a so we'll just do a quick solo dogfight in this ship. Um, kind of see its maneuverability and how well it, it handles targets. Because uh, it do, does actually have missiles on it that has four, four missiles come stock. Then we're going to go over uh, more information on the quantum enforcement, um, the Q&A, um, kind of how the Mantis works. Um, then we're going to go over an article about fishing ships out of uh, trade lanes. We will do a loadout on this ship. Um, we'll do the commercial. The It's pretty short commercial. We'll do a third-person chase camera dogfight, and then we'll wrap up. So thanks for sticking with us so far. If, uh, if you like the video, if you like our channel, you like what we're doing here, I'd ask you to please drop a like and subscribe on the video, and uh, we'll see you in the dogfight. All right, folks, so here we are in the Mantis. Um, unfortunately, it's an atmospheric bounty. We're going to we're gonna <laughs> try it out here. Um, I just have these. Whoa, I didn't mean to fire that missile. We just have these two laser repeaters here. But they are size three, so let's try to lock on our target. I did get my missiles fixed. Oh, he's not happy. And we'll fire a missile at him. Okay. This is an Aegis Eclipse. 38 rounds. Oh. Man, he got really a good angle on me. <laughs> I should have been paying more attention. Um, he did quite a bit of shield damage, but now we're on his six quite a bit. Now that my shields have recharged. I'm going to empty my whole magazine into him. I definitely don't want to be... He's got unlimited ballistics. Unfortunately, so definitely don't want to be in the path of those with a small ship. And you got to keep an eye on your altitude. I have switched the power capacitor up a little bit, and there we go. So we didn't hit him with our missile, I don't think, but uh, we did subdue the bounty. So there's a quick bounty mission. Looks like we actually took some damage on the ship. Those ballistics, they, man, they impact quick and they do a lot of damage. Um, reset my balance here. So well, let me max out the capacitor. When the capacitor is maxed out to weapons, we get 46 rounds, regular 38 rounds. So if that matters to you, then uh, maybe you should go with the higher round count. So with that, um, Solo dogfight is over. Let's uh, switch on over to talking about the quantum enforcement device. All right, guys. So we are here at uh, StarCitizen.tools, the Star Citizen Wiki. And I just wanted to kind of read over and discuss a little bit about quantum enforcement. This is the first of a few articles we're going to do as part of the ship review. Um, the reason being is because there's only right now there's only two ships in the game that have any type of quantum enforcement or uh, quantum interdiction and that's the mantis and the drake cutlass blue but i think they're not going to be the last ships to have it and 
In addition to that, I think there'll probably be some kind of modules or something like that we can buy to uh, give that ability to other ships, maybe. So, quantum enforcement uh, is the usage of quantum enforcement devices, QEDs, to stall or prevent quantum travel in other ships. Due to the nature of this technology, certain jurisdictions will require licenses for the operator to be part of certain organizations um, or for the operator to be part of certain organizations. And that makes sense, right? If you maybe have a mission or you're trying to do some kind of law enforcement, um, then that would make sense that you have a license uh, approval to operate. Or you can be in unmonitored space and not get caught. Generally, quantum enforcement includes two techniques, the quantum snare and quantum dampening. The quantum snare is the primary utilization of the QED intended for large radius events, approximately 10 to 20 kilometers. Uh, it will create a bubble around the ship. Any ship that is within the bubble will be knocked out of quantum travel and ships passing through will be pulled out of quantum travel as well. Engaging the quantum snare requires significant charge up time, which is true for the Mantis. And maintaining the snare requires a lot of power while generating large amounts of heat. Uh, current functionality, the current game implementation is fairly limited at best, as the functionality for properly scanning travel routes and quantum events does not yet exist. If you want to enter the ship, you have to, um, it has to pass close enough to you. In the case of the Mantis, the only ship currently with snare functionality. Uh, this will be 20 kilometers in each direction. If the sh and it's a bubble, so it's you know three dimensional. If the ship gets into range, your QED will pull the ship out automatically. You will interdict everything passing through your snare. If the ship is traveling in quantum in the quantum tunnel, even teammates and party members. After you have enabled your QED, you can choose to charge your quantum snare. This generally takes 30 seconds before you can engage your quantum snare. For the duration the quantum snare is active, the QED will require a lot of power and the ship will emit a considerable amount of IR and EM. If you choose to then disengage your quantum snare, the QED goes into a cool demo for two minutes, during which you cannot utilize the QED in any way. Um, and so that's kind of what happened to me in the video. I was trying to use it and it hadn't been two minutes yet. Other things to consider, for an, for an unknown reason, the quantum snare will only pull out ships traveling in the quantum tunnel. This tunnel opens after the ship travels roughly 2,000 to 4,000 kilometers after departure, depending on the quantum drive used. Because of this, sitting in range of a spot below this limit will cause you to only catch inbound traffic. It is suspected that bad server tick rates may cause uh, the target to bypass the quantum snare bubble. That's definitely happened to me when I've used it before. Uh, nothing is static. Moons in the game rotate, and if you are on the same physics, physics grid, you will rotate with them. Places like Everest Harbor or Grim Hex or the planet and are constantly rotating. Catching inbound and outbound traffic, traffic there is almost impossible. Always consider these places to be at every point of their orbit at the same time. Don't turn off the snare if you pulled out a ship. It cannot jump away since the snare is also jamming it. Just stay in the 20 kilometer range. Interdicting ships is illegal and you will get a 7500 Alpha UBC fine. Uh, you can stay outside of the range of a combat range to combat this issue, but it is not always guaranteed that you won't get a fine. And that has happened to me before. I, I turned on the interdiction in in uh, legal space, and I got and immediately I got a I got a fine. Uh, the snare cannot be used in the green zone of a station. These will reach 30 kilometers out from any station or outpost. Snare event markers will be shown to all of your party members. This makes it easy uh, to engage a target fast. Let's talk, talk a little bit about quantum dampening. Quantum dampening is the second usage of the QED, and this is what the Cuddy Blue does, and this is also a second function of the Mantis. Uh, it prevents the activation of quantum drives within a short range while active, approximately 4,000 meters. 
In contrast to the snare, dampening can be activated instantly, trapping lone, unwary ships as long as they are within its radius. Since the current implementation of the snare makes, makes it jam the quantum drive as well, ships with both a snare and a dampener functionality, the Mantis, rarely use the dampener. The only benefit for them is that it can be instantly engaged. The snare takes 30 seconds to charge. Ships without the snare functionality, such as the Cuddy Blue, can use the dampener to keep targets from jumping away within the 4km range, but can most likely not pull targets out of quantum travel. Um, as of patch 3.13.1, QEDs are available on the RSI Mantis and the Drake Cuddy Blue. The functionality of each ship's QED is listed in the, in the table below on the site, and it just talks about what, what we're talking about. So there we go. That is from uh, StarCitizen.Tools. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is I get a drink is there is a Reddit guide on the Star Citizen subreddit. Uh, it's called Fishing Ships. Um, it has been updated for 3.16.1, uh, but it was rewritten for 3.15. So it says uh, with with 3.15 around the corner, I thought this is a good opportunity to repost this guide. Um, this person learned everything by trial and error uh, from comments below uh, the last guide. So if anyone has more information, uh, and if you do, please, please, you know, update this stuff. The more information we have, the better. Uh, status of the snare. The snare did not always work in the past, which is true for me. As of 314, it has been fixed, but just in case bugs come back, we're, they're going to update the, this page. Quantum interdiction with snare is working. Days without failure, greater than 100. Jamming uh, is also working. Talks about the QBD dampener and snare. What is that? So we've already talked about that. So I don't want to necessarily go over that. Um, but basically, it does talk about uh, if you want to interdict a ship, it has to pass close enough to you within 20 kilometers. If the ship gets into range, your QED will interdict the ship automatically. The key is waiting at the right position so the ships actually pass through your snare. There are multiple approaches. You can fly the route your target is going to take and set up your snare somewhere along uh, their route. Um, try to avoid the middle due to high quantum speeds and desync. Or you do the following, which is kind of what their, their guide is about. Uh, finding the right position with geometry. <laughs> I don't want to get into the math of it. Um, but uh, so they're drawing triangles on the map. And they're trying to kind of triangulate where, where you want to go. I would, I'll, I'll put this link in the, uh, uh, the doobly-doo down below. And if you guys want to read it, uh, go ahead and read that. Um, and then it has some stuff about help. I interdicted something. Uh, so if you are the Mantis pilot and you interdicted something, hopefully you're not alone uh, because you never know what you're going to interdict sometimes. Um, and they could definitely outgun you and kill you. I always have, you know, someone else out there to help you. You are there to maneuver and not get fired on and keep them from quantuming away. So uh, that's what I would recommend doing if you're in that kind of a piracy group uh, to interdict. One day when we could actually interdict like NPCs, that whether they're good guys or bad guys, that's going to be a whole different ball of wax. So... Um, helpful tips, things to consider. As mentioned above, you will only be you will only pull out ships that have traveled a certain distance. This distance depends on desync and server health, so try to stay as far away from the start location as possible. Uh, at least a hundred. What's it say? A hundred thousand? Yeah, at least a hundred thousand kilometers, um, according to our testing in three fifteen. So I would say if you're a million kilometers away, that's a safe bet. Uh, we do recommend to have something around to test the snare while interdicting at distances below 150,000 kilometers, just to be sure. And elect to play it safe at distances above 200,000 kilometers. Uh, similar to the first point, there have been multiple people telling them that uh, they also think that the server tick rate and overall health of the server is in, uh, very important, which, which makes sense. You know, a bad server just is horrible. Uh, nothing works right. 
Um, it talks about nothing is static. Everything rotates. We just talked about that. Um, your prey is legally allowed to kill you, even in range of a comma ray. You will also appear red on radar to your targets, and especially inexperienced players will be scared by you. Experience has shown that the Mantis is usually the first ship to get attacked, which is probably true. I know when I get pulled out by pirates, I always go after the Mantis first. Uh, interdicting ships is illegal, and you will get a fine uh, unless you're outside of monitored space. Um, snare events have no sound or anything like that. The marker is your only indication that you interdicted something, so make sure to always have your eyes on your screen. Uh, you can accept a cargo mission or anything that gives you an item with a marker. Once you arrive at the right position to snare, simply throw out the item. This will mark the position the Mantis needs to be at to interdict. Uh, we especially recommend that when snaring ships at remote locations, uh, like some entrances of the Aaron Halo, for example. That's a good tip. Use a box mission to have a distance marker. Um, and you can snag mining ships. So there's a lot of comments on here and things like that. Uh, let's move on to the Q&A for the RSI Mantis uh, from CIG. Okay, so here is the Q&A um, for the RSI Mantis. Will we be able to fit interdiction devices to other ships? In the future, yes. Though quantum enforcement devices are not currently equipable by other player flyable ships, so my, my hunch was correct. When available, QEDs will be equipped via the utility items ports. However, they won't be as powerful as, as the units built into ships such as the Mantis and may require uh, compromises to loadout. They will also be used by various AI ships and security forces to interrupt physical, or I'm sorry, player quantum travel. Good to know. Will we gain a crime staff for pulling people or criminals out of quantum? It will be illegal to use a QED within certain jurisdictions, though it won't affect a crime stat at the release of the Mantis. It does now. <laughs> uh, why would the UEE allow such a ship to be sold to regular civilians if interdiction devices are illegal? How is RSI selling them? Just as the UEE civilians have access to heavy offensive weaponry, they have access to QEDs for personal protection and in the use for careers that support the advocacy in Navy. The hope is that we'll be able to create situations where the use of interdiction is sanctioned, such as working within a security force or defending a homestead from pirates. What will the counter to this new feature be? For its initial release, the QED uh, uh, uses power usually allocated to the Mantis' other systems, such as shields, thrusters, and weapons. Along with this heavy power requirement, a long cooldown ensures that QEDs aren't constantly generating snares around the burst. Eventually, greater restrictions around green zones and increased law enforcement patrols will mitigate overuse. Longer term, there are plans to give players the opportunity to escape interdiction by dynamically adjusting their quantum drives. For example, adjusting velocity would in turn require the interdictor to adjust their behavior. Good to know. Do you plan to allow more flexibility with quantum travel so that we can better avoid the main travel lanes, like quantum traveling in any direction without first setting a destination? Good question. While being able to create safer routes on your own is a planned feature, it is not scheduled within the release uh, of the Mantis. Uh, with with the release of the Mantis, currently connecting existing quantum nav points will be your best boy best bet at avoiding a quantum snare. The PvP implications are obvious, but what examples of PVE gameplay can the Mantis uh, can you give us? You'll be able to interdict any passing AI unlucky enough to get caught by the QED, giving you potential targets to attack whenever it's used. When you fire off your interdiction device, will it negatively impact your allies as well? Anyone caught by a QED will be pulled out of quantum and be unable to initiate again for a short period, be they friend or foe. I think they're more talking about will your party get a crime stat? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. Is the RSI Mantis... I don't think so, by the way. Is the RSI Mantis designed to fit inside the hangar of the Polaris? Uh, it was not designed to fit inside the Polaris. The Sabre was planned to be the upper limit um, of the space. Um, but who knows? Once the uh, once the Polaris goes to production, it, it just might. That'd be pretty cool. Will it have a bed, toilet, or living space? We already know that it has a bed and a toilet, not really a living space. Is interdiction game uh, gameplay complete, or will there be more iteration on the... Come on, guys. You know there's going to be a ton more iteration on interdiction and all the missions i'm not even going to read that will the disruption field work inside a ship 
Uh, like if it's activated inside a Polaris. No, it will not fire correctly if it's inside of another ship. Can an EMP disable the interdiction bubble set off by the Mantis? Not directly, but the EMP should disrupt the Mantis's power plant long enough to prevent the QED from functioning. That's a good point there. What does an interdiction cost for a Mantis pilot? Um, the QED requires a lot of energy and generates a lot of heat, so it's not a very stealthy weapon. When jurisdiction laws are enabled, crime stat increase a direct... Retaliation by law enforcement will be the cost. Will there be a size limitation uh, to the ships that the Mantis can stop? In this first implementation, it will be able to stop any ship of any size. As we iterate, uh, they'll determine that balance. Is there any cargo capacity on the Mantis? The Mantis has no cargo capacity. You guys don't can carry boxes. Um, so players planning to ambush cargo-laden ships should bring support. Is the Mantis immune to its own interdiction? It is not immune. <laughs> it can also not go into quantum while it's interdicting. What is the cooldown on using the device? They're still balancing the QED, but we know the cooldown right now is two minutes. So there we go. That is the Q&A on the Mantis. Now let's take a look at the actual uh, RSI page of the Mantis. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is kind of, I guess, the page they use to sell things. <laughs> um, I've seen many types of pages like this from uh, CIG. So the Mantis here, the Quantum Enforcer, it is equipped with a rainy quantum enforcement device from YTAC, packing both a quantum snare and dampener. It's ideal all-in-one catch -em and hold situation, a solution endorsed by security professionals the galaxy over. See how it works. So we'll hit next, you can see this hatch opens a little bit. Catch! The Rainy's Quantum Snare generates an anomaly capable of ripping ships out of quantum and into the Mantis's striking distance. Step 2. Hold! The integrated quantum dampener inhibits your target's quantum drive, preventing them from spooling up for a hasty escape. And you see the it's starting to move out here. And enforce. Step 3. Snare chips become easy prey for the Mantis and its allies. The Rainy's intimidating range, coupled with the ship's impressive propulsion system, warrant there's nowhere mayhem can run that Justice can't ride it down. Pretty cool. And then we'll, we're going to come back to the Mantis video here in just a second. We'll probably end this segment with it. And then there's a bunch of pictures here of the Mantis. Here's number six of eight, number seven of eight. We've been in the interior. There's the cockpit. Uh, that's a cool picture of it snaring a caterpillar. There's the Mantis again, Mantis again, and top view. There we go. Uh, the fax is 30 meters in length, 17 meters wide, 8 meters tall, max crew of 1. Talks about the shield generators and the weapons. The, this is even out of date, I, I believe. So Maybe not. Maybe it's still in date. I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. I changed all the components anyway. And we're going to do the loadout section after we watch the video. Lead the posse. While the Mantis is a comprehensive quantum enforcer on its own, the ship is most effectively deployed in a specialist capacity, anchoring a pack of heavy hitters or running point for coordinated tactical sweep and seizure efforts. The Mantis thrives, ripping half the ships out of quantum with the Rainized Quantum Snare, stranding them with no easy escape thanks to its integrated dampener, thus rendering them easy pickings as the big guns move in for maximum enforcement. And then apparently when it first came out, there was some kind of an Aurora upgrade offer. I don't think that's available anymore. Um, ship options. Uh, excuse me. So it is $150. It still is $150 on the pledge store and it's always available. And then there's actually a t-shirt for it. A Mantis t-shirt. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, then talk about upgrading their Aurora. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's a, if that's still a thing or, or what. Yeah. It just takes us down here. Uh, Aurora owners looking to pursue justice. These war bond only CCUs include lifetime insurance. I think that was only, oh, you got a suit and a helmet. That'd be cool if that was still like thing. I mean, I would, up, I would buy an Aurora to just upgrade it. Get, anyway, let's come up here. Let's watch the RSI Mantis video uh, on YouTube. And then we'll get into the loadout of the Mantis. Stand by. The Mantis is one of nature's most adept predators. Its patience immeasurable, its focus indomitable. It waits silently 
for its prey. The adroit hunter positions itself for attack, identifying its unsuspecting target when it's most vulnerable. And then, steeled to the task at hand, the mantis strikes. Its prey never stood a chance. All right, so that was the uh, the Mantis video. Pretty short, pretty sweet. Um, but let's go ahead and let's talk about the RSI Mantis here at Urkel.Games, the DPS Calculator Live. This is the default view for the Mantis. It is a roll of an interdiction ship, combat, size 2, crew of 1. Uh, its total hit points is 11,450, so not too shabby. Uh, I, I've seen its shields get chewed up pretty quick with ballistics, though, as, as you saw in the video uh, with the solo dogfight. Um, its SEM speed is 168 meters a second, and its max speed is 1,220 meters a second. It's a uh, max pick shot and roll. Um, 40 pick, 37 yachts. It, like an Aurora is actually more maneuverable than a Mantis. However, maybe it's the shape of the Mantis being a little more aerodynamic. It felt much, much better in atmosphere. Um, the roll is fairly good at 175 degrees. Um, it is a uh, smaller ship, so the Hydrogen and quantum fuel capacity is pretty low. And if you do want to buy the shipping game, it is available at the new deal shipyard in Lorville for 1.2 million Alpha UBC. So let's look at what it comes with. It comes with two fixed size three laser cannons, um, the FL 33s, which are, are uh, those are decent. Um, and they're made by Chronic. So yeah, I guess the, the web page is still accurate. And the DPS is pretty good, 628 sustained. However, the speed of the laser cannon projectile, while it does have higher DPS and does more damage, you must get that shot on target every time for it to do more damage. Um, you, I think you would stand a much better chance at putting on a size three laser repeater. While it does do less damage, it's fires a lot faster so you're probably more likely to get more shots on target if that makes sense so i'm going to change the default loadout from uh it's fl fl loadout to the cf337 panther repeater because uh, it's the same stats as the other size threes and it is the cheapest so it's going to reduce our dps to 458 sustained and 1000 dps on a burst uh, we cannot change the QED at this point. It is fixed. Uh, missile racks. So this comes with uh, two size three missile racks, um, which you can obviously change. Uh, the default loadout is uh, having two size two missiles. Um, so two missile racks, each with two size twos. You can change that to four size ones if you want to. Uh, it comes with Dominator two EM missiles and uh, Ignite two infrared missiles. Um, I would probably actually swap all of those out for Strike Force 2s. Um, actually, no, Dominator 2s do more damage. But I don't love the infrareds, so I'm probably going to swap those out for Strike Force 2s. The shields. So they come with all stop military grade C shields. And every all the other systems in here are military grade C. Um, not bad components, they're fine. Um, but if you look at the shields or 3000 hit points, if you're going to be a hard, you're going to be targeted a lot if you're pulling people out in a Mantis. So I would say probably just bite the bullet and go either get the FR 66 military shields, which you probably don't need. Cause unless, I mean, maybe, cause if you're going to be doing PVP, you're going to want stuff that's better against distortion damage. Uh, cause that's typically the PVP build these days. <clears throat> so I would probably go with FR 66s. Let's let's just pick that. Otherwise, I would recommend going with with the civilian uh, seven SA Concord. But FR 66s, you're gonna get a little more hit points out of that. So now your your total uh, bubble shield is 3450. 
for the power plant. It, you are already over half with the military grade C Regulus. Um, I would recommend upgrading this uh, probably to either a JS300, which you're still over half with that. <clears throat> I like the JS300. I think you're going to be fine using that. Um, but if you want something that's going to give you more power, you might want to consider an industrial drive. Uh, even the most powerful drive here, the Breton, industrial grade A, you're still just at half with your power use. So you might want to consider that. I would probably, I'll probably say, yeah, let's go with the Breton. It's going to be expensive, but it's probably going to be worth it if you're going to keep that quantum device on all the time. For the coolers, I would up, because of the heat that it's most likely going to generate, you're probably going to need stronger coolers. Um, I would probably go with military coolers in this case, but you could go with the ultra flows, with the highest cooling capacity. If you're constantly getting too hot, go with the ultra flows. Uh, if you just want a solid cooler that's better than the stock cooler, um, you could go with the glaciers, which are the military grade A's. Not much more cooling capacity with those, though. So I'm going to recommend the ultra flows for right now, but it could go either way. <laughs> and then the quantum drive. It is a military drive, so it's it's a fast quantum drive. Um, but you cannot make a trip from like Crusader to Hurston without stopping for gas. So I would recommend going the civilian drive, either the Atlas or the Voyage. In this case, we'll go with the Voyage. So let's add up all those things. Non-stock items to cart. Let's pull down our cart. And we can see that the cost is not insane. It's under 200000 to fully upgrade it. But let's see where we can get all this stuff. Um, I try to consolidate getting all this stuff as much as I can. Um, Area 18. So it looks like Orison, Cruel 1. Okay, so this is probably the best you're going to get here. Um, so it's going to be 178,302 Alpha UBC. The Breton at Area 18, the Panthers at Area 18, the Voyage Quantum Drive at uh, Magini Point above Area 18, the Shields over at Crew L1, the Coolers over at Crew L4, and the Missiles. You can get them at multiple places, but you can also get these at Area 18. So there we go. And last but not least, let's talk about the paints. Uh, the base paint is pretty cool. It's, it's this white and, uh, and black, and we've seen that in the video, but it does come with a couple different paints. The first paint is the Mantis Polar Camo Livery. Uh, modify your Mantis with white and gray camo paint scheme specifically designed for the 2950 IAE event at Microtech. And the other paint that came out um, during that event was the Mantis Stormbringer livery. Uh, this custom Mantis paint scheme was created to celebrate the 2950 IAE at Microtech. It blends black and electric blue to give the ship a cool new look. Okay, and uh, that is it, guys, for the, the loadouts and the discussion on quantum drives and the video. And all that's really left is uh, the test of interdiction, which I'm hopefully going to get some people in the org to help me out with that. And we'll, we will uh, check the interdiction and see how that works. And then uh, we will do a chase camera dog fight. Uh, we'll probably try to rig something up uh, post interdiction and see how that works. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that going. And uh, after that, it'll be final thoughts. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you're liking the content. If you are, please feel free to drop a like and a subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. The like really helps the algorithm. And if you have any comments or questions or whatever, put them in the comments below. And uh, let's let's hit up some live gameplay. Fist25 here, and I got my buddy Java Sparky behind me. We are uh, up near uh, Hurston, and we are going to demonstrate um, how to capture a ship. Um, so you see Jala is behind me in his 400i, and um, I, I'm going to reset my view. I am pointed and aimed at her L5. I'm going to go about a million out, um, and then I'm going to basically kind of turn around, and I'm going to face Jala's marker, and then, then I'm going to turn on the quantum enforcement device, and then I'm going to tell Jawa to go ahead and go. And we'll see uh, towards her L5, and we'll see if we can pull him out of quantum. 
All right, you good, Jawa? I'm good. Let's do it. All right, let's do this quantum here towards her L5. So we started at 12,000 or 12 million, like 846. Um, not that this is a huge space lane or anything like that. I mean, I think you'd get more. If you were going to pirate, you'd probably be better off doing this around uh, like Arc Corp to Hurston or something like that, or maybe like Lyria to Arc L1. <laughs> but we're going to do it here in this just to demonstrate the capability of the quantum enforcement device. Okay, we're nearing 12 million here. I'm spooled. All right, well, don't worry about it yet. I'll tell you when to quantum. Okay. Okay, okay. We're about a million. I just shut down my quantum drive. And I'm going to just make sure I clear everything out. Um, I'm going to turn around and face Java. We are in a party, guys, and, and this should work on a party. So, um, okay. I am targeting Java. Now I have to go turn on my quantum enforcement device, which we need to go to our weapons menu here. And we need to turn on that guy. Okay, and we can see that our little piece here opened up. And we're starting to get the uh, quantum enforcement device to spin up. It looks so cool. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Java, but it's like this astrolabe with like a singularity in it. It's pretty cool. Oh, right on. Right on. That sounds cool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. There we go. I let me I'll, I'll give you the go ahead Java when you're clear okay. we're starting right. to generate our our uh, field and it's supposed to go 20 kilometers out so if you are headed uh, straight towards her L5 now Java you have to be going to her L5 don't go to me right that's so you, might, you to... might want to target it in your map okay Okay, so we got our quantum enforcement device spinning up there. That thing yeah. is cranking. Are you ready to quantum, Jawa? Uh, let me just double check here. Okay, I'm spooling. You're spooling to her L5? Yep. Roger that. Okay. Engage, when, engage whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. Okay, well, you were to, to my left, so... Well, go ahead and uh, quantum straight to me. Okay. So apparently, um, guys, it's it's we tried it. It's not uh, well, it's not working. Let's try it. Fist, let's try something. First of all, I'm gonna find you. Um. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna quantum to you, and let's see if I can. Um. It let's see if be, I can quantum away from you if you have should, that on. Yeah, it should not let you. It should inhibit you. Right. So let's try that. Trying to. And you. this may be something with uh, three seventeen and 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 the streaming Here's coming you. in and out. I I don't know. I have been pulled out with pirates. Um, I have too. In this pack, we so all, I think we all have. No, I mean in 317, so... Okay. Go ahead and quantum to me when you're ready. Yeah, I'm trying to get you. And coming to you now? What I'll do is I'll come... Huh? You know... If you have your quantum interdiction on, I shouldn't be able to quantum away. Correct. I'm within. Within a range. Okay. Right. There's there's a range. Yeah. I think well, it's well, like, let's I think find it's out only two thousand. I think it's, I believe it's only two thousand. Oh, okay. It's pretty short. Oh nope, no! Hey, I'm being interdicted right now. Being interdicted. Oh, it is. It is showing. Okay, so that does work. I. I don't know why it didn't work before. It should have. It's supposed to reach yeah. out 20,000. We might have been off by just a sliver. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so now, can you spool now. your quantum? Yeah, I'm spooled. Yeah. I, whoa, no. Nope. QT system jammed. Okay. So that is working. 
I'm going to come in uh, kind of to the side of you. Okay, I'll just sit here. I'm just going to come to a complete stop. It says quantum calibration started by you. And as soon as I'm going to come in behind you and <clears throat> have you go forward. Okay. And then uh, I'll follow you a little bit and then <laughs> I'll let you run off and we'll see when your quantum actually starts. Okay, so I'll head towards her L5. Okay. Yeah, I heard you go by. Okay, I am behind you. Go ahead. All right. SCM. Yeah, whatever. You can just go. Okay, go okay. ahead and uh, go from, go max speed here. Yeah, I am. That are wide open. And you're still jammed, right? Okay, I'm going to stop yep, moving. Still jammed. You're 1,000 meters. Okay. 2,000 meters. Is your quantum working now? 3,000? Nope. 4,000? 5,000? 6,000? Nope. 7? 8? 9? 10? Did it come online? Nope. Let's see what happens so at 20. The QT system jammed. Okay, you're at 20 now. Nope. Uh, now I got it. Just got it. Okay, so that's about 26 kilometers. So I think there's still a little bit of streaming issues here in 317 and things calculating and stuff. But uh, it's right around 20 that it was able to pre uh, prevent yep. you from quantum. Well, so. the thing is, when you're quantuming into like a station or something, um, you're 26K out anyway. So I could see yeah, that number. Yeah, me too. All right, so we did show it worked. I just think there's a little bit of lag in there. But um, enough of the introduction, guys. We are actually going to move on to a little bit of a dogfighting section. And uh, Java's going to be our pilot, so stay tuned for that. Hey guys, so I know you just saw Jaya blow up, and 
While he is self-proclaimed not the best dogfighter in the world, we were in 317 PTU um, when it was pretty darn rough and there was still a ton of streaming issues going on with quite a bit of desync. Um, even I had a lot of jitter and desync as I mopped up the fighters after uh, they blew up Jawa. My, my final conclusion really here with the Mantis as, as I'm going to let you watch me uh, take on the rest of these guys and, and mop them up with the Pisces, by the way, um, is one, the Mantis has size one shield, size one components. It has size three guns, which is nice, and some missiles, but it is not a great dogfighter. It uh, does not do very well in the realm of dogfighting, and it is made to be a ship to be interdicted and have friends nearby in order to uh, do the actual piracy. Can it defend itself a little bit? Yes. Would I use it as like an everyday dogfighter? Heck no. Um, but it is actually a really cool ship and it's a fun ship. And I even thought about buying it at some point, but I, I think uh, I will avoid the real money and I will just end up buying this in game um, because I don't see myself doing a whole lot of interdicting or enforcement. And if I was going to do the enforcement, my play style, I would use the Cuddy Blue. Uh, that's more of a police thing to prevent people from quantuming away while we're trying to make an arrest or something like that. But with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching the video. If you made it up to this final point here and, uh, I really appreciate it. If, uh, you enjoyed our content, if we'd earned your like and subscribe, if you go ahead and like subscribe, uh, the video, subscribe to the channel, maybe even throw a comment in the comment section. It really does help, uh, the algorithm here and make the video a little bit more popular. And uh, if you have any suggestions uh, or anything like that, please let us know, please hop on by the discord and check out our discord we do stream every thursday night at 7 p.m mountain time and sundays jawa does a stream called java with java which is uh, pretty mixed but a lot of the times so they just do some cool mining and make money as a team and we hope to see you there and until then as i say every time if the fist don't get you the lightning bolt will good night stanton